Hello all, uh, welcome to my channel. Today I have uh, Vasik Bhamla with me, uh, who is a uh, experienced automation tester and uh, an open source contributor as well. So today we'll be discussing about uh, code reviews and Vasik will be sharing his views around how to perform a code review. And this code review basically uh, refers to the automation test scripts and how he performs the test scripts uh, reviews as well as what all uh, what all things he considers while performing the code reviews. Uh, maybe he'll be talking about some static code analysis tools as well as also some of the uh, experience that he shares from the previous project that he uh, worked on and he performed some code reviews there as well. So without taking much time, I would like to hand over this uh, to Vasik. Uh, Vasik, over to you. Yeah. So hi. Uh, thanks myself for having me on your channel. So I'll be talking about the code reviews, like normally what I do in code reviews. So since I am uh, doing open source uh, quite actively and I am running uh, uh, Boika framework, uh, which has uh, uh, an ultimate open source uh, framework, which I would say, because it supports uh, uh, all the automation, like from API, web, mobile for Android and iOS. So these projects, uh, normally I have uh, all the process set in place. And normally what I do is I follow some uh, uh, practices, uh, 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 code practices, uh, which I normally look into. And uh, if I look into any PR, I normally do the code reviews following these uh, uh, steps. The first step is normally an automated uh, code review, which is already set up in the project. Like for example, if anybody, writes any code in uh, java or they write any documentation in javascript so this project already has all those things and if uh, any changes is done in the those kind of uh, folders so what happens is whenever the contributor uh, pushes the code or try to commit the code in git so the autom this uh, automated lint code check and the java check style will run and it will check out whether the code is matching the proper coding standards which uh, is set by the project so if anything is uh, missing over there it will immediately give an error and the committer won't be able to commit the code so that's one step uh, of uh, doing an automated code review by stopping the commit itself if there is any issue with the coding style or coding standards uh, set by the project Another thing is once the code is pushed and it is uh, merged in a develop branch, so there is a Sonar Cloud uh, integration which is uh, done. So Sonar Cloud will is another tool, automated tool, which will help in identifying the uh, code smells and all the different coding issues which is there, like security issue or any dupl code duplication or uh, any kind of vulnerability which is uh, introduced in the code it will automatically identify that and it will highlight it to us and it will also check whether the code coverage is met for the project that is also important because we need to have proper code coverage uh, whenever we are writing any code and uh, another in automated tool which is there is a github code ql which uh, is also kind of a security tool which uh, checks any uh, security vulnerability in the code and it will highlight uh, us on that whether it is uh, uh, having any security issue or not and uh, then the second step of uh, normally the uh, in the code review is the manual step where we just see if there is any hard coding values are done uh, normally we don't do any hard coding in the tests or wherever it, it is required for example in automation we do uh, some specific weights uh and so these values should be configurable uh rather than hard coding it everywhere so it is in it is like indirectly duplicating that uh, value everywhere in the code and it is just uh, uh not good not a good practice so that uh, that is one thing to avoid hard coded values so i look for that if there is any hard coding i'll uh, let the contributor know let the committer know that it is uh using a hard coded value and you should avoid that another thing is like whether the functionality of this uh, story is getting covered so for if a pr is raised for any particular ticket or story it should uh, come have uh, all the functional functionality covered in that pull request 
so that is also required to be understood uh, and check whether the, these functionalities are covered completely or not. Another thing is uh, like uh, the code written should not be that lengthy and complex. So the complexity was also requ required to be minimum. Uh, and then how how to reduce the complexity? Normally we can use encapsulation and abstraction uh, in prop in proper places. So it will reduce the code uh, number of li lines of code, and uh, it will be uh, help uh, simplify the code for anybody to understand. So uh, the if the complexity of the code is less, then anybody in the team can you know uh, understand what the code is doing, and it will be they'll be able they'll be able to contribute also later on uh, and another thing is uh, like uh, uh, another uh, thing which i normally check is uh, the naming naming convention so all the languages have its own st standard naming convention which they follow so java has its own naming convention uh, javascript has its own naming convention likewise uh, all the languages have its own naming convention so that also we need to identify whether the naming convention is followed properly or not for example a static uh, final uh, constant is a constant should have a caps uh, all caps uh, naming convention uh, sep and word separated by underscore so that's an example for a constant uh, naming convention. Similarly, like a class has its own naming convention and method name is ha having its own naming convention. So likewise, we need to see. And also the names given to the method or class should not be that big to, you know, so it should not be that big. It should be concise and to the point like what that method is doing, what this class is up about. So that also is important. Another one is like, uh, exception handling if the code is uh, uh, written then how the exception handling is done so that is also very important whether we are, we are just consuming uh, or you know bypassing any exception or we are properly handling and logging the exception properly so that is also very important we don't want any false positive in the test execution or anywhere uh, because the exception was uh, you know uh, suppressed somewhere by using some try catch and we in catch we are not uh, handling it properly uh, so we just we should not do just like uh, uh, print stack trace and that's it we should uh, terminate the execution after logging the exception properly and another thing is like you know uh, logging is also very important so wherever a new method is written so proper logging should also be done uh, to let the uh, let anybody know who is, who is uh, monitor the law looking into the logs or uh, what this method did so uh, it will help us in uh, identifying the uh, issues suppose if there is any issue in any workflow then after looking at the logs we should be able to understand what steps uh, was uh, done during the test execution so that is another thing that logging is also important on that Apart from that, like uh, proper code documentation should be done properly. Uh, like uh, each method should have its own Java doc uh, about it. So uh, it will describe the little bit about what this method is doing. So if uh, a new member comes into the team, they should be able to understand like what this method does and uh, should have a little bit context around that. So this is also another important aspect which I normally look. And there can be also like many different things which we we can look into. Uh, but I think these uh, many points are enough for uh, getting a proper code quality and you know, the proper quality which we require. And uh, the lastly, while you know uh, reviewing a pull request or reviewing an, any work done by a team member. We should not be just you know, going about checking their code and uh, giving the feed, giving them feedbacks. It should uh, we should also appreciate their work and effort they have put in, and we should also uh, have, you know, give a proper appreciation. And the feedback should be in such a way that you know it is not uh, degrading their developer uh, expertise. So we should uh, give proper feedback and descriptive feedback what we require.
and it should not be like a one liner this is missing so we should also elaborate like why it is required also. so that will also help developer learn something about like why this this naming convention is required why this comment is required whatever changes we are suggesting why it is required in the first place. that is also very important so yeah i think that's pretty much what i have normally do Thank, thank you very much, Vasik, for this uh, detailed explanation about code reviews. I think uh, you missed one point regarding which which normally our testers look out for. That is uh, uh, the unit test. Uh, could you share some thoughts on like writing a unit test for the feature that has been developed? Uh, maybe an automation test or uh, what do you suggest? So normally, in the development team, the unit test is written by the developers, and the developers write it because they know what. You know changes they are doing in the application so that's uh, important from the developer point of view to write proper unit tests to help proper coverage on that as so, a as a tester we should also know what unit tests they have written from, so that will help us to you know avoid uh, testing the same thing again in the later stages uh, I, I was talking about the automation framework so if we are developing a framework yes uh, do you write unit tests for that framework as well yes yes I was coming to that point. Okay. Sure. So I was talking from the project point of view, like uh, if an application uh, is developed uh, for our project, then the app developer should write the unit test for it. And for example, if we are writing a framework for the project, then we should also have a proper unit test written to check the methods in the framework properly. That's normally what I do. Uh, in my framework, I normally maintain 80% code coverage. Uh, and I have uh, set up uh, Sonar Lint, Sonar Cloud uh, as well. And uh, it is also set up in my Maven pom.xml. So if I, if my coverage is not meeting them, but build will automatically fail. So that's the thing normal, you know, that's the standard normally. It depends on uh, the per project, uh, like how much percentage they want to have the code coverage. Okay. Can you name a few of the, uh automated static code analysis tool that you have used previously or maybe in your project? Normally, uh, in my open source, I normally prefer a Sonar Cloud. Uh, and uh, in the projects, I have seen Checkmarks. Checkmarks is also a different tool, which uh, is, it helps in identifying any security issues in the code. So, uh, yeah. Okay. These so, two uh, are the more, most popular tools I normally use. I remember one of the tools that uh, Git uh, automatically has uh, covered in our repository. So, CodeQL it is. Yeah, CodeQL as well as I uh, recently checked in one of in, in one of our repository while pushing the code to the main repository, main branch. I accidentally uh, checked in the uh, token where I was writing some API test there and uh, I got an email from Git Guardian. So that's, a, that's also a tool that uh, automatically gets enabled in your uh, repository on GitHub. So if you uh, like check in any of the token or secrets in your repository, it will, uh, it will give you an alert stating that you have accidentally checked in this token or secret you need to take care of that as well so uh yes they have come up recently on that okay okay uh, th uh thanks wasik for the detailed explanation uh, i think it would be more helpful for the community to take care and uh see what they do or what steps we need to follow with regards to code reviews and code walkthroughs as well. And it was very much helpful uh, for me as well to learn something from you. Uh, I think we can have some more sessions in the future uh, regarding these things. And I would suggest people from the QA community to check out uh, the description of this video where we provide some of the sample repository which uh, uh, Vasik talked about in the video. And uh, I would also suggest uh, people to like, comment and share as well as subscribe to this uh, channel for it reaches to the maximum number of people who would learn from it. And do comment out your suggestions if you want some more sessions like this. I would be very much happy to bring in Vasik or some more experienced people uh, from the community uh, to share their experience. Uh, thank you, Vasik. It was a wonderful session. Thank you so much. Yeah. Bye. Nice to be here.